So, um, yeah, so I'm Joel Chibnall. Um I have been the CTO at FutureLearn for the last uh, few years, and I'm here to talk to you about telling stories through your commits. So I think uh, if we have a successful uh, software development project, then our key challenge as lead developers is to manage the complexity of that project because they can get uh, projects can get very complex very quickly, even amongst quite small teams. Um, <coughs> and as lead developers, you know, uh, working with our teams, we use a lot of techniques and spend a lot of our time and thought on this. So we think a lot about naming uh, of methods and functions and variables. Um, we think about our code design. Um, and we probably, in our teams, spend a lot of time refactoring code, so taking code that works and making it simpler to understand. Um, and probably most of your teams are spending a significant proportion of their time writing automated tests. And that allows your teams to have the confidence to keep changing the software, but it also helps document what the code is supposed to do. And I think one of the things that these tools, these sort of techniques, all have in common is that they're about communicating the intent of our software. What is it that it is supposed to do? And if we want to keep changing it, we need to understand what, what the code that's there is there for. There's one tool that I think we underutilize in our communities for doing this, and that's our version control system. Now, all the examples today I'm going to give are around Git, because that's the version control system we use at the moment. But I think all the principles apply to whatever system you're using, so don't worry if it's not Git. So our version control system and our commit history has some very special properties that make it particularly useful for this. It's kept forever. It's always up to date. And this is almost certainly not true of most of the documentation that you have perhaps on a wiki, or even in code comments. And it may come as a surprise to some of you, it's searchable. Now, Git doesn't make this obvious, so here are some commands that are useful. You can search all the contents of all your commit messages. You can search all the contents of the code changes in your commit messages. And you can find out where each line of code was last changed. So you get output something like this. And it's these properties that allow Mislav Marinic to say that every line of code is always documented. So if every line of code is always documented, how do we make sure that this documentation tells a useful story to us and our teams about what that line of code is about? I'm going to share with you today three principles that I think will help with this. First one, most importantly, make atomic commits. Make your commits about a single change. And to illustrate the importance of this, I'm going to share a Git horror story with you. Um, and this is for a project that I am responsible for. Um, <laughs> bug fixes? <clears throat> Which ones? How many? We have no idea. And a WordPress 4.0.1 update. Uh, and those of you who are laughing are probably laughing because there are 175,000 lines of code changed in this commit. So reverse engineering this commit to find out what happened is really hard. So let's imagine an alternate version of history where this commit had been split up into uh, atomic commits. Here we might have, reading from the bottom because it's Git, uh, WordPress 4.0.1 update. That's probably the vast majority of that 175,000 lines of code that changed. And then eight commits, each one about a single bug that's easy to understand. When I talk about this, I'm often asked, how big should a, an atomic commit be? And I think the general rule of thumb is we in the industry make our commits too big. And so I think it's worth thinking about uh, a minimum viable commit. What's the smallest useful change that you can make to your code base? Another useful rule of thumb is to avoid needing and in your commit messages. So if you did A and B, maybe that's two separate things. Second principle, write good commit messages. So clearly, that's very easy for me to say. So maybe I'll take you through a little template to give you an idea of what I mean. 
So a short one-line title, because you get your commits in lists, and a longer description if you need to. An explanation of why the change is being made. If people want to know how they can change this in future, they need to know what you're intending. And then lastly, when you make this commit, you know more about why you're making this change and how you're fixing or improving this thing than anyone else ever will. And so it's quite, it can be useful to outline some of the context or the alternatives you considered. And to make this more concrete, here's an example of a commit message from one of the other projects I'm responsible for. So you can see the one-line title. You can see a link off to our bug tracking system. You can see an explanation of the quirks of Outlook and why we're making this particular change. And you can see a link off to a blog post which, tells, uh, which explains more about the problem. This is gold dust for people going back and trying to work out why the CSS is in the particular state it's in. Third principle. Revise your development history before sharing. Now, we all know that once commits are on master, once they're deployed, you don't necessarily want to change them out from underneath people. But your development branches, um, it can be much more useful if they tell a useful story about what you intended to do, rather than a blow-by-blow account of all the missteps you took along the way. Um, to give you a simple, oh, sorry. Um, so there's a tool for this, Git Rebase Interactive, and this allows you to remove, reorder, edit, merge, and split commits. So essentially with this tool, your uh, development branches are infinitely malleable. To give you a quick example. Imagine I've added foo, made a commit, removed bar, made a commit, and then I've spotted a typo in that first commit. So I make a new commit, fix the typo. That's just noise for other people. No one cares about the fact that I didn't get the first commit right. So you can use Git Rebase Interactive to merge the first and third commits and tell a much, more, a much simpler story about what you were trying to do. So three principles. Make atomic commits, write good commit messages, and revise your history before sharing. And this is a quote from someone who joined our team recently, which I would hope Help, will help persuade you of the benefits of doing this. So perhaps you're sitting there as lead developers thinking, this sounds like a really good idea. How am I going to take this back to my teams on Monday? How am I going to persuade them to adopt this practice, which seems like it has payoffs, months, years down the line, and perhaps for other developers on the team? Won't this take a huge amount of discipline? Well, I think the key thing here is all these practices make work for people in your teams simpler right now. Let's go back to them. Make atomic commits. This is about making sure that you're making one change at once to your code. This makes it simpler to work on it. Write good commit messages. If you can write down what you're trying to do in the with a particular change, you're halfway there already. This is really valuable, uh, a really valuable discipline for you and your teams to get into. Revise your history before sharing. If your development branch tells a good story about what you did, it's easier for you to understand what you did and whether it solves the problem you have. It's easier to share with others, perhaps as a pull request. So all these practices will make things easier now. Thank you very much.